Well, I hope everyone is excited because we are going to see how to make glue from milk. But before we get there, we have to answer one question. And that question is, what makes glue stick to something else? To answer this question, we have to understand what adhesives are. Adhesives are sticky substances that help one thing stick to another. As an example, let's take a look at something I'm sure everyone enjoys, which is a nice, delicious peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which we have right over here. And let's look at the jam, right? Jam, uh, we can think of it as glue. Now, I'm sure it is difficult to dig out of the jar, and that is because of the strong forces that keep the jam naturally stuck to each other. It's adhesive force, which is the ability for uh, something to stick to something else is so strong, and that's why it sticks to the bread so well. So now, if you put peanut butter on the other slice of the bread and then close up the sandwich, then peel them apart again, you'll see some jam on both slices of the bread. So let's take a look over here. As you can tell, there is some jelly on the peanut butter. And so this is because of the adhesive forces that cause the jam to stick to the bread. That is more powerful than the force that keeps the jam itself naturally stuck to each other. Now, glue in general, just like the jam, has a strong force that keeps glue itself stuck to each other. And when you put glue on a piece of paper and stick another piece of paper to it, the glue adhesive has the strong forces to keep the two papers stuck. And so from that, we can conclude that glue and jam are adhesive, just alike. And, you know, I think that is a pretty cool discovery. And, I mean, uh, I hope you guys find it that it is interesting that adhesives take uh, part in your daily life and we don't even know about it and I hope that helped you understand what adhesives are and I hope everyone has fun watching how to make glue from milk. Thank you! Hey everybody! Um, welcome to our experiment. We're here in the Union College Biochemistry Lab getting ready to make milk out of glue and vinegar and baking soda. I'm Charlotte. I'm Sophie. We're really excited that you're watching our video today. So here I have some skim milk, fat-free milk, um, and we need this skim milk so that it doesn't have those fats in it because um, those will mess up our experiment. I also have um, just some simple vinegar um, like you'd get from a grocery store um, and I'm gonna use this today because it's very acidic. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna mess up the proteins in the milk so they, they get all long and stringy and um, that makes them better for making the glue. And it's gonna cause them um, to go from being all dissolved in our milk to sitting on the bottom of the milk container. So what I need is a four to one ratio of milk to vinegar. So for every um, one cup of milk that I use, I need a quarter cup of the vinegar. So here we just have a beaker that we're going to use to measure in. And I'm going to add, let's see, 250 milliliters is a cup if you're ever actually working with beakers and need to know what the right cup is. Alright, so let's do 250 milliliters. little over 50. <laughs> and then we'll add uh, the equivalent of a quarter cup of uh, vinegar here. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to sort of splash this around, stir this around. And after you stir it, you're just going to let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes. So essentially what's happening here is our casein is um, going to go from being dissolved in the milk to uh, coming out of the solution so that it's a solid, and that casein is going to form our milk. You can so actually you start can kind of see it on the sides of the beaker. You can see that before, if you just take normal milk, you don't get this chunky stuff at the top, but now we have chunky stuff on the sides. and. It's very difficult to see in the video, I think, but it is chunky in this beaker. So I'm going to keep stirring it for a little bit. Do you guys know why it will sink to the bottom versus sitting on the top? 
Great question, Sophie. Yeah. Um, so it's actually because it's going to be more solid, the, the liquid, and it is going to be less dense, more dense. It's been a long day. So things that are more dense are always going to sink to the bottom. Um, and that's why we're going to actually have the casing sink to the bottom while the liquid's going to stay above it. Yeah. All right, so we're going to let this sit for another 10 minutes, and then we're going to come back and check it out really soon. So after we waited 10 to 15 minutes, and you can clearly see that you're going to have a gradient with a solid at the bottom, what you're going to do is you're going to take just an everyday coffee filter. Um, typically, if you have the cone ones, those are going to be a little bit better. And you're going to put it over a separate glass. So we have another beaker here to be able to do this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pour your mixture into the filter. And what this will do is it's going to take that casing that's stuck at the bottom and it's going to trap it. So you're only going to get the liquid into the beaker because that casing is a solid. And so it's not going to be able to pass through the filter. So all you do is pour it. And this part can be a little messy. So just be prepared um, and try to pour carefully. So it can take some time for the liquids to pass through the filter, which is why we poured some in and now we're going to let it drain nice and slowly here. So we can see that we had that really chunky solution in our beaker, um, in a very chunky milk solution here. And now all of that chunkiness is getting stuck on the top and we just have this nice clear liquid that's going through. So what I'm doing right now is moving around the, the liquid on the filter so that it doesn't get stuck on all the casein that's stuck on the filter. Uh, and this is just helping us get rid of the liquid more quickly. But essentially now, we have a little baggie of casein, and we're squeezing out the last bits of water here. All right, guys, so this is a little bit of what we get in our filter when we're done filtering. It looks really nasty here, but it's perfectly safe to hold in my hand because it's just the milk proteins that we're gonna use to make our glue. So this is what it looks like. It's just kind of chunky. And I'm gonna scrape it off of our filter so that we can um, do a little bit more chemistry with it, and then it'll be ready to use as a glue. All right, everybody. So here we have our casein in our beaker. Um, you can see that it's just um, a clumpy mess of, of proteins here. We strained all the water out using our coffee filters. And now we're going to test just our plain casein. So remember, this casein, um, it was in the acid, so it's all stringy. Um, and the proteins aren't folded up like they usually are. Um, usually the proteins are all folded up and now they're all long and stringy. So let's see if these long stringy proteins will work as a glue. So let's try to glue these two pieces of paper together. So we got some glue on this one. I'm gonna try to stick it to this one and see if it'll stay. So we can uh, let that dry and we'll test it and we're going to come back to that one later. Um, but what do you think, Sophie? Do you think that the proteins are going to be better glue when they're all like long and stringy and don't stick to anything? No, I think we need them nice and clumped up to be a good adhesive. Oh, dang, that makes total sense. They have to be all clumped up so that they stick to each other and to the paper. Yeah, because if they're long and stringy, they're not going to be good to stick to things. Oh, got you, got you. Um, dang, I don't know, what could we use to get rid of the acidity in here so our proteins can go back to being clumped? We could use a base. A base, yeah. My favorite base, I use it in the kitchen all the time, it's baking soda. Oh, well, then why don't we try to just add a little bit of baking soda into it? Let's do it, let's do it. All right, let's just, um, like, we can just give it a little shake of baking soda, and uh, we'll see how it goes. 
So I'm just going to use my, um, I just have a little stick here, but if you're doing this at home, you should use a spoon or a fork or a knife. All right. All right, so we have some baking soda in here, um, and I'm just going to mix this up. Ooh, it looks, I can see it getting chunkier. Huh. Interesting. Oh, this is so neat, everybody. We can actually see it expanding. If you watch it, it's moving up the side of the container. Dang, Sophie, I don't know. Why do you think that might be? Hmm. Oh. Well, it could be due to release the carbon dioxide from the baking oh, soda. Yeah, I think so. I think our acid is reacting with our base and that made us some bubbles. So our casein got really foamy here. All right, I'm going to stir it down a little bit more. Maybe we should put more baking soda in here uh, and just do that till we get rid of the bubbles. Then we'll know it did the whole reaction. All right, got a bunch more baking soda. We can see, oh, it's getting kind of foamy now. I'm actually going to take a bit of this and just put it on the spatula and we'll kind of watch it. You guys can see if it's getting bigger. Kind of looks like a bubble bath right now. Yeah. I think maybe this stuff already reacted. Our reaction might be over. Which would be exciting. Because then we can try to test it as blue. Oh, wow. I'm getting excited. <laughs> All right. This is very foamy. It kind of looks like a gel. Um, this, honestly... I don't know, this looks a little bit like glue. Huh, so let's see if it'll work as an adhesive to stick these two pieces of paper together. So we're gonna put it all on one side. Right. Spread it around a little bit. That might be a bit too much. Let's see. Now we're just gonna stick these two pieces of paper together and make sure to really get that glue between the two of them. And then much like the other one, we're just gonna have to wait until it is dry. Yeah, should we test our, our other one while we yeah. wait? I mean, this one's probably still on the ground. But uh, let's see. Can we pull the papers apart? So this is our old papers, the papers before we added baking soda to make our proteins clump back together. And the reality is when you pull them apart, there is no tension and um, definitely not sticking it together. So was it was it really easy to pull apart? It was Sophie? super easy to pull apart. Gotcha. Um, it wasn't an adhesive. There no. were attractions between our two pieces of paper. So the two pieces of paper did not have any attractions. Um, Dang. It must be those long stringy proteins. We must like, be they just don't up. work. Wow. Let's see. Let's see if it works. Well, one. Charlie, would you want to try it? Yeah. All right. So this is this is the papers where we used glue the um the casein where we made it clump back up with the baking soda we made this some um, blue like substance and let's see oh this is this is harder to pull apart it is like really sticking if i pull really hard i can do it but yeah these two pieces of paper they want to stick together let's do you want to do them uh, side by side we'll see how hard it is all right so i have the one that um, is the glue. And so and I have the one with all the stringy proteins without the baking soda. So as I pull it apart, my sheets are still trying to stick together. My or, sheets aren't at all trying to stick together. So these sheets just fall apart, but this one really tries to stick. Dang! That is super glue. cool! Oh. Alright! So, before you guys finish with, up with the video, we just have a couple questions for you. Um, so you can think about these and then we'll have some answers for you. Um, at the end of the video. So, um, what do you think, um, what, uh, what words could we use to describe the vinegar? And what words can we use to describe the baking soda? All right. So that's question one. Question one. And then, do you remember what protein it was in the milk that made our glue? That's question two. Do you remember why bubbles formed when these two were mixed together? What kind of 
uh, gas was made there. All right, those are our questions for you, everybody. Um, we got three questions, so think about those and uh, you know, enjoy learning about the chemistry of glues. Have a fun experiment. Bye. Bye. Wow, wasn't that cool? I never realized you could do that with milk. As you heard, there are a variety of adhesives you could purchase at the store, such as glue and tape. However, like the adhesive we just made with milk, there are also a variety of natural adhesives. Some of them just come from animals such as bacteria, algae, fungi, mussels, and barnacles. An example of an adhesive that comes from an, an animal is spider webs. There are also a variety of natural adhesives we can make with a little chemistry. For example, mixing a little cooking flour with water makes paste, which is another adhesive. Who knew? I guess you learn something new every day.